Good morning, this is Kelly Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Sioux Falls police say a one and a half year old child who fell out of a third floor hotel room window on Saturday had a pulse but was unresponsive at the scene. The boy was brought to a hospital, but police were unable to give any further update on the boy's condition. A GoFundMe account has been created for the toddler. The company that owns the hotel has not returned our request for comment. Sioux Falls police are looking for a driver who ran a red light and crashed into a car, sending it into a building. This was the scene just after 1130 Monday morning at 14th Street and Main Avenue on the southern edge of downtown. Police say the driver who ran the red light didn't stop after the crash. They may have been driving a gray pickup. Police say the driver of the car that collided with the building has minor injuries. A Rosebud woman admits to killing her brother over an Xbox. Lucy Medicine Eagle has made a plea deal. She plans to plead guilty to voluntary manslaughter. In exchange, a second degree murder charge has been dropped. According to new court documents, Medicine Eagle admits that in March 2022, she'd been drinking and thought her brother had taken her gaming console. So she struck him in the head until he became unconscious. Days later, he died in the hospital. When she's sentenced, Medicine Eagle faces a maximum of 15 years behind bars. Now let's get a check on our weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Going into a stormy day, Brian? Yeah, these thunderstorms have been rumbling overnight and more on the way today. As we check some of the rain gauge reports as of the 7 o'clock hour, Sioux Falls Airport's about a half an inch of rain, but I will argue you can find some heavier numbers than that already uh, here in the last 24 hours, especially toward Brandon. Uh, I've got some numbers over there of at least six to maybe seven tenths of an inch of rain. Northwest Iowa, too. If you get down to Rock Valley, there's some folks here with about two inches of rain. Even Canton is uh, over an inch and a half of rainfall. Now, western South Dakota, a lot of numbers there coming out of uh, Jones County near Murdo. Phillip has over an inch, Rapid City an inch and a quarter. And again, those are the airport numbers. Local totals can be higher, and we're filling in the gaps this morning. We're going to see more storms uh, off and on in the southeast today. Marginal risk of severe weather in the Sioux Falls area, but at this point, the worst of the outbreak goes in uh, central Iowa later today. Also, a lot of wind the last 24 hours. Some overnight peak wind gusts of 60 to almost 80 miles per hour just north of Huron. And that's with non-thunderstorms, so quite an active forecast. Uh, low to mid-60s today, Sioux Falls, as we dodge and probably deal with these thunderstorms off and on. We'll be uh, seeing numerous rounds of rain today for central South Dakota, Rapid City, a lot of wind. More details on weather coming up. Thank you, Brian. Two neighborhood projects took off yesterday in Sioux Falls. Project Nice and Project Keep help keep neighborhoods around the city clean. Residents can get rid of any unwanted furniture and recyclable items by placing them on the curb for the city to pick up. It's just a, a good community project uh, to kind of keep neighborhoods clean, uh, give the, give the uh, opportunity for individuals to put stuff out. Uh, there's no cost in it. Only selected areas are part of the project. We've posted a map under the story at kelloland.com with a uh, design of this year's designated neighborhoods. Oh, for many students, high school is the time to figure out their passions. And one Sioux Falls student has realized her passion is journalism. Reese Duncan has been reporting stories for the Lincoln High School newspaper for the last three years. She's also the online editor-in-chief. But now she's celebrating the honor of being named the South Dakota High School Journalist of the Year. Journalism is so big for me. I think when I was first exposed to it in the Statesman as a sophomore when I joined, um, it just immediately called out to me because journalism is a way of connecting people. I think it's well deserving. Reese is someone that has worked really hard to get to where she is and what's really cool is that this is just the beginning. She has a very awesome future ahead of her in journalism. Duncan is planning on studying broadcast journalism at the University of Missouri in the fall. To check out some of the work she has done with the LHS Statesman, follow the link under this story right here on Kelloland.com. The recent warm weather has farmers of every kind eager to get into the fields. Cherry Rock Farms in Brandon has a majority of its plants, including beets, carrots, onions, and tomatoes growing inside the greenhouses. 
The garlic is currently thriving under the sun, but the sooner they get everything planted outdoors, the earlier they'll open for the season. We always push the limits as much as we can to try and open as early as we can, but it's usually that first week of July is, is kind of our typical starting date. We're hoping late June, early July, just as soon as we can get out there and we aren't nervous for the final frost date that we'll be able to open a little bit earlier this year, hopefully. Marco says 99% of what they grow at Cherry Rock Farms starts as a seed in the greenhouses where they currently have 60,000 onions growing in the dirt. And that's a, that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? All right, a lot of those plants outside, they are wet this morning. We've had numerous showers and thunderstorms, more rain coming today. There is still a risk of some severe weather. Most of this is in Iowa, but you look at southeast South Dakota too here, that marginal risk is out, and that does include Sioux Falls. Basically, the thinking is if we destabilize in between some of these rounds of thunderstorms, we can uh, maybe produce enough energy for that severe limit as we go into the early afternoon. So just continue to watch the weather. Uh, and if we're not severe, we're dealing with some locally heavy downpours. We've had uh, over two inches of rain around Rock Valley, Iowa. I've got numbers out around winter that are close to that level. We've had an aerial flood warning near Murdo. And yeah, you can see there's more of this kind of pinwheeling around that area of low pressure. Folks at the southeast, a lot of 60 degree weather. I would probably say mostly in the mid to upper 50s going forward for Aberdeen, Mobridge, back to Rapid City. Notice all the wind coming into Rapid City. A lot of that today with headlines of 30 to 60 mile an hour winds. And uh, as we wrap up the afternoon again, the areas of showers and thunderstorms in the southeast will mainly transition to just plain old rain showers with a colder northwest wind. And that's how we'll kick off our Wednesday morning, kind of blustery with that uh, shower chance early in the morning. Now, during the day on Wednesday, we do see some recovery. I think still some 60 degree weather will sneak back in for the James Valley, but another frontal boundaries coming in. Maybe some returning shower chances Wednesday night. A lot of that shows up in the far south central and the southeast. And then once that goes through, then it's colder. And that's how we're going to end the week here. We've got a colder forecast behind this whole system. And highs for the weekend, I think we're going to struggle just to get out of the 40s. So, uh, yeah, if you do the math on that, that would be roughly 40 to 50 degrees colder than last Saturday. Isn't that something? That's how April is, though. It's just you never know this time of year. You'll get into one week and it'll be warm, and then the next week a lot colder. So this is the trade-off weekend. 45 Sioux Falls for a high. Morning lows, frosty, cold. Yep, there's a good reason why we say to kind of wait on planting some things because we are certainly within that realm here this weekend, those colder nights. Uh, Aberdeen is also in the 20s this weekend. In fact, we've got one, two, three nights of mid to upper 20s here and lows uh, or highs that is in the daytime mid to upper 40s. Next week looks better. We'll get back on track Monday, Tuesday. I think some pretty nice weather at that point. Pier, we're dealing with the rain today. The leftovers tomorrow are what redeveloped south of Pier. And this frontal system on uh, the western flank of South Dakota looks like we could see some additional pockets of light rain or light snow into Thursday. Otherwise, a lot of chilly weather. Highs in the 40s, at least through Saturday. More details online at kelloland.com.